Padder, Padder told Bean from Ain2, there's a lot of fear mongering about the economic costs of constitutional change. Padder, you worked on the first Dáil report on the All-Ireland economy. What, do you, what did you find out about the prospective economic benefits of an integrated economy? Well, uh, Francis, the first thing I will say, um, when students of the future study the history of how a united Ireland came back, uh, they will look at this moment as seen as a catalyst to the achievement of that event. I have no doubt about that. Um, it, it often strikes me as strange that you have a political establishment that often say that we can't afford Irish unity. I'm sure Michael Collins, De Valera and Liam Mellows were told the same when they struggled for independence. Uh, I to I'm sure that they were told that there would be great uncertainty if we break the union uh, with Britain. But the truth of the matter is that generation knew without a shadow of a doubt that one of the key components of a successful economy is self-determination. Uh, that is central to be able to developing and growing any country is for a country to be able to determine its own future. And, and look what's happened to the North of Ireland in relation to partition. The North of Ireland's economy has been hammered by partition. The North was the engine of the economic development of Ireland just 100 years ago, and it has fallen ever since. And the truth of the matter is that the Tory and London government have only ever been interested in the home counties of Britain. If you look at even Scotland, the north of England, and Wales, they have never got the attention or the investment that those regions need. And it's, this, it's the same with the north of Ireland as well. Another issue that shocks me when people say that we can't afford the north of Ireland is as if the north of Ireland can't be successful. The people of Newry are just as clever as the people of Dundalk. The people of Dungannon are just as hardworking as the people of Monaghan. The people of Derry are just as enterprising as the people of Letterkenny. If they have the right conditions and self-determination, they can achieve the same economic prosperity. There's absolutely no doubt about that as well. And I want to challenge an, an element about unionism here. Unionism says that if unity happens, we will threaten the dependency on London. What kind of economic ambition wants to see a future where the North is dependent on a handout from London for generations? We don't want that for the North of Ireland. Another issue, there's been studies done by the, li the likes of Kurt Hubener from the British Columbia University. He has shown objectively that there would be a bonus of about 36 billion euros to the GDP of this country if the North and the South have the same economic conditions. And you mentioned that report that I did. In that report, um, that was the first report done in the Oireachtas, believe it or not, since partition. In that report, we spoke to 100 people from different backgrounds. Nationalists and unionists, business people, trade unionists, people who worked in the state sector, people who worked in the community sector. And everybody agreed that if we plan together, if we fund together, if we deliver services together, they will be better services for people and they will cost less to deliver. End of story. And that's a really important, uh, uh, I think, framework for us to work on at the moment. And see, we can get about the, bu the business of that as well. We don't have to wait for a referendum to start to plan together, to start to fund together, and to start to uh, deliver services. I see the border as a wall with a thousand blocks. Each one of those blocks can be taken down individually to improve the services that happen. So you mentioned healthcare. Absolutely, we can look at cancer services. How could they be better distributed on the islands to make sure that patients get better services? You know, spatial development. They built a motorway from Belfast to Newry in the 70s and they turned left to Warren Point instead of going straight to Dublin. We should be spatially developing together on this island. And just the last point I'd like to mention. There's been a lot of talk about whether or not a referendum would be won uh, in, in, in this country at the moment. I think we are on the precipice of enormous and significant change in this country. Change that would first of all fulfill the objectives of generations of Irish people who had justified object objectives for Irish unity, but also change to lift the economic circumstances of everybody in this country. The, you can, you can, you can uh, say for an, uh, forever and a day will a referendum pass. The only way you'll know for sure is to have a referendum. End of story. And the secondly, I would ask the political establishment north and south to stop running away from the democratic rights of people north and south to self-determine our future through a referendum now.
Thank you very much.